Thank you for purchasing the AI Optic Vision Screener. Before you get started, we invite you to watch this video for important information. Unboxing of an AI Optic Vision Screener. Once you receive your brand new AI Optic Vision Screener, check to make sure that the outer packaging is intact and free of any damage that may have occurred during shipping. Then, open the packaging to check the contents. Inside you will find the AI Optic Vision Screener device a Type-C power cable, a power adapter, one tripod, and a screen cleaning cloth, as well as a user manual. Product appearance. The AI Optic Vision screener device features a seven inch touchscreen display. To interact with the device, simply touch the corresponding icon on the home screen. On the side, you will also find a USB power port. This port is enabled only for charging purposes and is not for data transmission. To avoid risking damage to the device, do not plug in any external devices into the USB port. The serial number can be found at the bottom of the device. Keep this number handy, as you will need to provide it if you ever need to contact our customer service. Keep the AI Optic Vision Screener free from scratches and damage by avoiding placing it face down. Charging. The AI Optic Vision Screener supports two power modes, battery mode, and wired mode. Battery mode is when the device is not plugged into a power source. Wired mode is when the cable is plugged in and providing power to the device. Be sure to charge the AI Optic Vision screener before using it for the first time. To charge the battery, plug the Type-C connector into the USB port of the device and the Type-A connector into the USB port of a power source. You will know your device is charging when you see a charging battery icon on the screen. It takes around two hours to fully charge the battery, and the device can run for about two hours on battery power. When the battery is less than 20%, the battery icon on the screen turns red. You can use the device even when it is being charged. Power on and off. Turn the device on by pressing and holding the power button for two seconds. There are two ways to turn off the device. Tap the power off icon in the navigation bar. Press and hold the power button for four seconds and tap yes when the dialog box appears. If the device does not respond, press and hold the power button for six seconds to force a shutdown. Lock screen settings. The AI Optic Vision Screener features an automatic lock screen function if it goes unused for five minutes. To wake it up, simply tap the screen. If the device is idle for 10 minutes, the device is automatically powered off. To use the device, you will need to power on the device again. To change the lock screen settings, choose Settings, Screen Timeout on the home screen, and put your desired setting. Wi-Fi. When you use your AI Optic Vision screener for the first time, the Wi-Fi configuration screen will pop up automatically. Select your desired Wi-Fi network, put in the password, and select Connect to complete the Wi-Fi connection. Once you save the Wi-Fi network configuration, your device will automatically recognize the signal and connect to the network. To change the Wi-Fi network, choose Settings, Wi-Fi on the home screen. Select another network and enter the password to connect to this network. Settings. When you use the AI Optic Vision screener for the first time, you should first set up your preferred user preferences. Tap Settings on the home screen. Then you will see the following options. Language, Time Zone, WLAN, Referral Criteria, Factory Settings, System Update, Machine ID, and Screen Timeout. Language. Select your preferred language. Time Zone. After you connect the device to the internet, the time will be automatically adjusted. By default, the time zone is UTC plus zero and the date is displayed in the year, month, date format. To change the time, you must first select the corresponding time zone. Tap Time Zone and then select your country's time zone. WLAN. Select a Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. Enter the password and tap Connect. Referral Criteria. The AI Optic Vision Screener supports three referral criteria, Arnold, Mata Silbert, and Arthur II. The default value is Arnold. The sensitivity and specificity of Arnold are very high. You can choose this option for routine examinations. 
If you are in a medically developed country or region, you can choose the Mata Silbert option. This option is sensitive and for children to receive visual evaluations. If you are in a medically underdeveloped country or region, you can choose Arthur II. This option features high specificity and thus helps reduce unnecessary referrals. Screen Timeout Tap the drop-down arrows in the Auto Timeout and Auto Power Off fields to select the desired options. System Update Check whether the system is updated. If there is the latest file, you can choose whether to update to the latest version. Machine ID This is a unique code for each device. If you need to view it, select Machine ID and then you can scan the QR code. Factory settings. This allows you to restore the device to the original system setting. Prepare for examination. The AI Optic Vision Screener uses a carefully designed infrared light specialized for safe use with human eyes. Infrared light functions by avoiding glare as well as pupil dilation. To get the most precise measurements, we recommend performing the examination indoors and away from direct sunlight. Since sunlight can interfere with the precision of the reading, please close the curtains and blinds of the room in which you perform the examination. In addition, in order to improve the stability and accuracy of the measurement, we recommend that customers use the included tripod stabilizing device. To start the exam, first enter the name, gender, and date of birth of the subject. Then tap the camera icon to proceed to the examination. Adjust the brightness. Check the brightness value displayed on the screen. For the best option, this number should be less than five. If the value is greater than five, the flash cannot be turned on and you need to reduce the brightness of your surrounding environment. If the value is less than five, turn on the flash function. Then you can proceed to the measurement step. Make sure the examination environment is quiet and free from distraction. If the subject is a child, make sure they are calm and able to remain still during the examination. Adjust the examination distance. The recommended examination distance is three to four feet away from the device. First, place the device at eye level of the subject or fix the device on a tripod about three to four feet away from their face. Then adjust the position of both the device and the subject to make sure that their eyes are seen on the screen. Move the device back and forth until a clear corneal reflection point is obtained. Now you are ready to start the measurement. To ensure that results are as accurate as possible, make sure that the subject looks directly into the device during the examination. The subject should sit up straight with the body facing the camera. Please remove glasses or contact lenses before starting the exam. Start examination. To start the examination, tap the camera icon on the screen. Remind the subject to avoid blinking during the test or else the examination could fail. The entire examination process lasts about five seconds. Once the examination is finished, you should see a dialog box on the screen. To view the examination results, simply tap the dialog box. View examination result. You can see the name of the subject, date of examination, spherical degree, cylinder degree, and interpupillary distance between the left and right eyes in the examination results. If the examination result was successful, the screen will say passed in green. If any problem is identified, the system displays referral required in red. Input the information of a new subject. You can input the information of a new subject on the home screen. Retrieve the information of an existing subject. Tap the retrieval icon at the bottom of the home screen. Enter the name of the subject and find the corresponding subject. Here, you can view the examination records of the subject or start a new examination record for the subject. Save or delete data. Every time an experimentation is completed, the result is automatically saved. To delete a result, tap examination records on the home screen. Enter the name of the subject, find the corresponding data, and then delete the result. Data export. When the inspection is completed, if you need to export the inspection results, you can click the export button below. Enter the email address of the file you want to accept, 
and submit it to view the relevant data file in the email. The device won't turn on. If the device does not turn on, check that the power supply is plugged in. If not, connect the power adapter to a power source and press the power button to turn on the device. The device is automatically powered off after power on. Connect the charging cable first. The system will prompt the charging status on the screen. Restart in about 30 minutes. The screen suddenly locks. The screen will automatically lock when the device is idle for a specified period. This is to save power. You can touch the screen to wake it up. If the device does not wake up, the device is powered off. You just need to power on the device again. On the settings page, you can change the lock screen timeout. Common reasons for measurement failure. The image is not clear. If the image is not clear, it's because the measurement distance is too far or too close. We recommend that you place the device about three feet away from the subject. Adjust the distance between the device and the eyes of the subject to ensure that the eyes of the subject can be seen on the screen. Then move the device back and forth until a clear corneal reflection point is obtained and the eyelashes and eyebrows of the subject can be clearly seen on the screen. When the measurement distance displayed on the screen is 95 to 105 centimeters, you can start measuring. Glasses detected. Subject is wearing glasses during the examination. Solution, ask them to remove the glasses and restart the examination. No pupils are found. When the subject has organic eye diseases such as corneal scars, turbid refractive media, cataracts, keratoconus, or retinal detachment, or the pupils of the subject are blocked by their hat, eyelashes, or hair. Solution, proceed to the referral process in case of any eye diseases. When the pupils are blocked by hair or eyelashes, adjust the hair or eyelashes. The brightness value is too great. When the surrounding environment is too bright, the brightness value on the screen will be too high for use. Solution, close the curtains or blinds to block out external sunlight. Incandescent lights tend to affect the performance of the examination, but fluorescent and LED lights are okay. If the brightness value on the screen is less than five, Tap the flash icon to turn on the flash. The measurement is not completed. If the subject closes their eyes or blinks frequently during the measurement process, the process can read as incomplete. This can also happen when the Wi-Fi network is unstable. Solution, remind the subject to remain still and avoid frequent blinking. If the issue is with the Wi-Fi, connect to another network and restart the examination. Eyes are closed or blocked. When the subject closes their eyes or their eyes are blocked by hair or other things, the examination will fail. Solution, remind the subject to avoid frequent blinking or remove obstructions in front of their eyes.